What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. This video is the start of a new series where we are going to be exploring the industries of Sri Lanka that support and develop this beautiful island nation. In this video, we are going to be taking you to the world's oldest coconut factory and show you the process of making all the amazing products that come from this humble nut and the enormous potential that is yet to be tapped into in this industry. And I'm going to be breaking a coconut and scraping it for the first time in my life. One of the reasons that I love making videos like this is because I learn so much. Now here's an interesting fact that I just learned. Out of 3.2 million acres of arable land in Sri Lanka, one third, that means one million of it is dedicated to coconut cultivation. That is how important and significant this humble tree is to the people of Sri Lanka. And today we are here at the Coconut Triangle and before I show you just how and why coconut became such an essential export crop to the island, I'm going to be showing you just all the different ways that the Sri Lankan people have managed to put every single part of this coconut tree to good use. Coconut has been used traditionally over a millennia for a whole host of reasons, like patching your roof, from your most basic essential like your roof, to your kitchen spoon, from fueling your fire, to the oil that you cook with, to your favorite Sri Lankan food. You name it and the Sri Lankan people have innovative ways in which to use this tree for their everyday living. And so it was only a matter of time before Sri Lankans began sharing the gifts of the coconut tree with the world. In addition to all the use cases for the average household, the real value of coconut is extracted right here. Today we are at the silver mill factory and we are going to go in and find out just how about 30% of all the coconuts that are grown in Sri Lanka have been able to generate over $800 million for the country. The Silver Mill Group, founded by Anthony Silva in the 1920s, is an innovative leader in the coconut industry of Sri Lanka. With over a hundred years of experience working with reputed brands from around the world and playing a pivotal role in shaping the local coconut industry's development, we reached out to them to help us get more insight into this industry. What you see behind me is the beginning of the coconut's journey through the factory. All the coconuts that are collected around the island are brought here and unloaded at what I like to think of as the beginning of the production line. The first step is to collect all the coconuts brought to the facility in batches based on the processing requirements for the day. From there, the coconuts enter this line where they are punctured and left to release the coconut waters which are collected and sent to the beverage facility. So once the coconut has been drained, it moves further down the line to the de-shelling process. Here the shell is carefully removed and then collected for further value addition later down the line. So after the de-shelling process, the coconuts find their way to the pairing section of the factory. Here is where the tester, a thin layer found in between the shell and the white kernel, is carefully shaved off and value added to create a very rich, nutritious coconut oil that smells absolutely amazing. After the pairing process, the white kernel finds its way onto a conveyor belt which then moves it on to the next process. Next up, the kernel enters the washing process, after which they are cut into the relevant grades and run through a continuous steam sterilizer to remove any bacteria from the fresh coconut. So we are now at the dry section of the coconut factory and this is another instance where silver mill has pioneered in the industry, specifically by installing these continuous dryers for the first time in the country in 1980. The purpose of this process is to reduce the moisture content which increases the capability, making it a shelf-stable product. Thereafter, the desiccated coconut comes to this part of the factory, where it is packed, sealed and moved to the warehouse where they await quality assurance testing prior to being shipped to the client. 
But it doesn't end there. Coconut water, which is usually a waste product in the industry, is now being value added here at Silver Mill's state of the art tetra pack facility. The process that they have pioneered extends out to the rest of the industry as well. This means where factories usually would have incurred a cost of treating and disposing their coconut water in the correct manner, they now generate an extra income source for themselves when Silver Mill purchases it from them and adds even more value to it. Now, despite coconut being the lifeblood of this nation, the industry today still hasn't reached its fullest potential. Research shows that despite the coconut industry generating over $800 million for Sri Lanka, it actually has the potential of reaching $2 billion. A lack of proper nutrition and care has led to a national average yield of 45 to 50 coconuts per tree per year in comparison to the average of 100 to 120 coconuts, which is seen in neighboring countries. In addition, roughly 70% of all coconuts produced in Sri Lanka are used for domestic consumption. And of each coconut that is broken for home use, it is safe to assume that about 40% of it is not fully utilized. Addressing these two factors would result in exponential growth in foreign income for the country. But how can we increase the number of coconuts that are produced in a country like Sri Lanka where land is a scarce resource? This is where silver mills with their past century of experience in the industry have pioneered a two-pronged approach to not only increase the yield of coconut lands but also to increase exports. The first approach that has been devised by them is to actually increase the productivity of your existing lands and we are here at the model coconut farm in Giriola to learn more on just how to do that. So according to what I've learned the easiest way to increase the yield of your coconut tree is to simply provide more water to it and a drip irrigation system like what we're seeing here is a fine way to do that. This irrigation system provides each tree with up to 50 to 60 liters of water per day. Now that's a surefire way to increase your yield. So here is another interesting concept that has been implemented here at the model farm. And what I like the most about this is that it takes your existing coconut land and really maximizes it. Something you would see is that coconut land is usually monoculture and each tree is spaced quite apart from each other, leaving a lot of land that is unutilized. So with intercropping, that gives you the ability to grow things in the short term when the plant is when your coconut plant is short as well as in the long term when they reach its full mature height as well so what this does is it not only increases the productivity of your land but now you're also increasing the revenue that you can bring in as well and just within this one acre plot there are 50 different crops that are being grown all organic which really blows my mind i've seen cinnamon coffee, vanilla, ginger, aloe vera, like it's endless, lemon, papaya. So it's really up to you, depending on what kind of person you are, what kind of crop you want to go, grow. Maybe you want to grow something that you like to have with your family, or maybe you want to grow something that's going to give you a revenue really quickly, then you can choose a crop that's going to suit that need, or you want to grow something for the long term. So there's a variety of things that you can do. Another really interesting technique that you see here at the model farm is surface water recharging. This is a very interesting technique because of the fact that you think that it might not be necessary. Example, when it rains, you tend to believe that, oh, this is great for the ground. It's getting soaked and the water is getting recharged. Wonderful. But most of the time what happens is the water tends to roll off on the surface and leave without actually getting sucked into the ground. This technique allows for the water to go deep into the ground by providing it with access to about three feet deep through a tube that allows for the water to be held there and then slowly percolate onto the ground and recharge the surface water. So what this does is it actually allows for all the plants in the area to have access to better irrigation. And all of the irrigation system's electrical components are actually powered by solar, making it a very sustainable operation. So here is another very interesting way of irrigating your plants. 
And this is a technique that has been learned and inspired from the farmers in Jaffna. And one, one great thing here at the model farm is that it is a place where you can share knowledge not only on modern techniques of irrigation and farming, but also traditional techniques. So it actually works in a way of conserving and preserving this knowledge as well. This is a very low cost and efficient way of irrigating your plant because this uses a clay pot which is sunk into the ground and refilled with water. The interesting thing about clay is that it naturally percolates the water wherever it is above the surface or within the surface and I am a big fan of it. This is some really amazing work that is being done here at the model farm by Silver Mills and I have learned so much today and I genuinely believe that what they're offering here, the knowledge and the expertise which is open for anyone to come and learn from is truly invaluable to all the stakeholders in the industry. You always go out of Colombo and you see so many large coconut estates and they are all grown in the same way. Monoculture with lots of land in between that are completely unutilized. This is for me a revolutionary technique of running coconut farms. It, it adds so much benefit not only to the environment and the biodiversity I'm sure but now you're also earning so much more from your land. So there's a lot of value that is being added here. But say if you're someone who has ancestral land but you really don't have the time to come here and learn and even maybe you have the time to learn but you don't have the time to implement Silver Mills has gone that extra step and now provides you with estate management, which means all of these techniques and all of these years of learning and expertise that they have will now be applied to your land and managed for you. And I think that's really brilliant because I know there are lots of people who have ancestral family lands, but who aren't even in the country and who sadly have to let go of them. And this is actually a brilliant solution to not only keep those lands, but also to increase the yields as well as the total revenue from wonderful techniques like some of the things that we have discussed here today. Which by the way isn't all of it, there's so much more, we have just simply scratched the surface so please do come here and check it out for yourself. The second approach that has been taken by Silver Mill and the industry at large is to provide a solution as well as create awareness by introducing an alternative at the consumption point. This is where a significant amount of wastage is experienced here in Sri Lanka. Now we are here at the Coconut Museum, the first of its kind probably in the entire world and this is a place that we can find out more about this and just about the coconut industry in general. What we have here is a very interesting and traditional piece of equipment that has been used in Sri Lankan kitchens for generations. This is what we call in Singhala a hiramane and in English you can refer to it as a coconut scraper. This one is a rather interesting one that unfolds like this. And there are many versions of it and there are modern versions of it as well. But this is a rather artistic rendition. So before we move on to the next segment, I want to show you guys how a coconut is broken and scraped the traditional way, which is still done in some homes today as well. I personally have never broken a coconut by myself at home. I have tried scraping it uh, just to help out in the kitchen when I was a kid. So wish me luck. Let's see what happens. Is it is it this way or this way? Like the lime, you cut the lime wedge. Like, yeah. Oh my God, it's happening. And I have broken my first coconut on YouTube with you guys. I hope you know how special this is for me. But I do feel like an accomplished adult immediately. So what I want to show you is that you would have noticed immediately that we lost all of the water. This is usually done over your kitchen sink. Uh, we're just doing it here today, but it's no different. All the water is usually just washed down the drain because there really isn't a use in a traditional sense for the coconut water. Next up is to scrape it. 
So the next step is to grate the coconut and I have grated a coconut before, I have scraped a coconut before but I do remember very distinctly being expelled from the kitchen for not doing a good enough job and I know that everyone at home in their kitchens try to make the best use and try to grate as much as they can because everybody wants to get their money's worth. So as you can see, I have hit pan as makeup artists like to say, which is when you hit the base of it. Usually when you scrape your coconut at home, you don't want to get all the way down here to the brown bit. Now we've learned during this video that the brown bit is actually called the tester. You want to avoid the tester and make sure you only get the white bit and leave the black part of the tester in the shell itself because usually you don't want any of that in your white creamy coconut milk but we now know the value that the tester actually holds and how every single coconut that is broken at home completely ignores the value of the tester again there is no use for the tester traditionally in Sri Lankan culture or in the use of coconut at home as well. So this is something interesting because the industry has been able to take two things that go to complete waste during home use and really provide so much value with it, which is I think a wonderful thing. So now that you've seen the traditional way of scraping a coconut and you know that coconut is used in 90% if not 100% of every single curry that's made in Sri Lanka. When you're traveling around the country as a tourist and when you're eating from all around the island, just know that most of the time, I would say 95% of the time, the coconut is grated the way that I did. So when you're eating at a, a, a local um, rice and curry buffet, you know, by the side of the road, in someone's home, somebody sat down and grated all these coconuts just for you. So traditionally what happens is you add some water, warm water into your coconut shavings and you let it soak and give it a bit of a massage so that all of the coconut milk gets extracted. Now this may still happen in the more rural parts of Sri Lanka but in the cities what mostly happens is that you will still have people scraping the coconut and then they will add it into the blender with some water and blend it before taking it out and squeezing it uh, to extract the milk but we're not going to use a blender because we're trying to explore the traditional way that it's done, uh, which is right here. I'm going to be taking the coconut. I'm going to add it into the sieve and the bowl. So you can immediately see the milk coming out and here is where you need to really give it a good squeeze. All right, so as you can see, I'm, I've basically squeezed almost everything I can from this. So usually when you make a curry, you're going to extract all the coconut milk from the coconut and then you're left with this pulp and unfortunately this pulp has no use so this is what leads us to the fourth wasted part of the coconut which is all of this pulp that usually just gets thrown in the bin now i'm sure you can find another use for it but in a traditional sense of what sri lankans use from the coconut for their rice and curry the most this is something that gets thrown away the other thing that's popularly made with coconut is of course the coconut sambal. Now for that, you don't squeeze the milk out of the coconut. You grate it and then you mix it with all of your ingredients like your onion, your tomato, your lime, your chilies, um, and then you just give it a good mix and consume it that way. So it still has that juiciness inside it. This however, the extracted pulp, is wasted. This is where retail alternatives such as silver milk, coconut milk, tetra packs and ready to serve coconut sambals have been introduced to the market to provide a solution and increase the efficiency of home usage. Even as a local, the most unique part of this entire experience for me has been this coconut museum. This is something that is novel and new and it's really special because it takes you through the entire history of the industry it is very easy to think that the coconut tree is simply just a tree that is a symbol of tropical living but for Sri Lankans it is almost a part of their DNA. This is something you can actually add on to your journey as a tourist. As a traveler when you think of Sri Lanka one of the first things you think about is tea and the tea industry is something that's much easier to learn about than the equally important coconut industry. 
That is what makes the Coconut Museum really unique and special because it is actually the first of its kind in Sri Lanka and probably even the world and this is giving you this very unique opportunity to learn about just how deep the roots of coconut go in this culture, its history and just how important it is to the country's economy and to the people. Today has been an incredibly insightful day for us. We have learned so much about the coconut industry and it has been extremely encouraging to see the progress and innovations from this humble coconut which is now a global superfood. Beyond the economic benefits, what we haven't been able to capture on camera is the meaningful impact that it has had on so many people and stakeholders who are a part of this industry. Personally, it has been extremely inspiring for me to see the journey of Silver Mill over the past 100 years and to see how the values that have been set by the founder, Anthony Silva, have been passed down through the generations and have become part of the DNA of the organization. And it doesn't stop there as it goes beyond and overflows into the communities that Silver Mills has become a part of. This has been the first part of our industry series, but I already feel an immense amount of pride in just what Sri Lanka has been able to achieve so far and the potential it has to do even more. I didn't know how I would feel when I started this series. I didn't know what to expect. I knew I would be learning. But just from this first video, I can already tell that there is going to be a common theme throughout all of these videos. And that is going to be the story of incredible Sri Lankans doing incredible things. And I am so excited to bring you more of this series. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.